Swinburne University of Technology. I'm uh, Peter Newton. I'm a research professor in sustainable urbanism at Swinburne University of Technology. Well, Swinburne is a fertile area for research. It's a boutique university, so it enables you to make easy access to critical researchers and professors in uh, other faculties, as well as in the Institute for Social Research, which is where I'm based. The research that I lead at uh, Swinburne in ISR is focused on the sustainability of our built environments. As you can see from the setting that we're in at the present time, uh, our cities are highly livable. The current rate of consumption of our built environments and our residents mean that we need approximately seven hectares of the Earth's surface to supply the resources to sustain those built environments and lifestyles. If all of the six billion people that we currently have on this planet, increasing to nine billion by the middle of this century, aspire to the same kinds of built environments and lifestyles that we enjoy here, uh, means that you need approximately two additional planet Earths. So the challenge is to identify pathways that are capable of maintaining our lifestyles, but radically and rapidly winding back the scale of resource consumption that goes into our built environments and that we consume as individuals. There are three pathways to uh, wind back these uh, high levels of consumption for our built environments and uh, urban residents uh, that uh, I direct at Swinburne. The first of these is in relation to technological innovation. In other words, what are the new urban infrastructures that will be able to have less reliance on uh, resource inputs. A project in this area that I finished last year for the federal government and the state government of Victoria was one related to hybrid buildings. Hybrid buildings are those that can deliver a zero carbon future. To achieve zero carbon housing in settings like this uh, requires that the building shells become more energy efficient. We also need to use more energy efficient hot water heating, cooling devices, lighting and kitchen appliances. And you also need them to have access to um, what is called distributed generation, local energy generation, renewables based. Um, means that they're not reliant on the fossil fuel based uh, grid. And a combination of those three will deliver the pathway to zero carbon housing. The second pathway to a more sustainable urban future relates to how we plan and design our cities. The significant growth that we've been experiencing in the last five to ten years in Australian cities means that there is massive pressure in terms of uh, demand for housing. And so the challenge is to attempt to accommodate more uh, of the population within the existing built up area. So the challenge is how do we regenerate these what we call grey fields, suburban precincts within the middle suburbs. And that constitutes a significant project that we're doing for the Australian Housing and Urban Research Institute in collaboration with Monash University and RMIT. And here we're looking to develop a new development model for grey fields precinct regeneration. There are existing and well known and used models for greenfield development and also brownfields development such as we have at Docklands but nothing exists in the grey fields. The third pathway towards a more sustainable future involves attacking our consumption patterns. The ability to undertake leading international research which is what we aspire to at Swinburne means that you need to be in an institute such as the Institute for Social Research which is a designated tier one research centre totally devoted to research. Uh, where all of the professors across a range of disciplines provide the kind of fertile environment for interactions, identifying new ways forward. And that really is a critical element in attracting research grants and also postgraduate students. This has been a Swinburne production.